You're listening to the Angry Marks Podcast Network. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. My name is Ari Whitner, and this is your NXT TakeOver Philadelphia recap uh, here on AngryMarks.com. I want to thank you all for listening. Uh, first up, uh, during the pre-show, they gave out the NXT year-end awards. We'll go through those quickly. Rivalry of the year was Aleister Black versus Velveteen Dream. Um, Aleister Black actually won three awards. He also won Male Competitor of the Year and Breakout Star of the Year. Uh, Female Competitor of the Year was Asuka. Match of the Year was Tyler Bate versus Pete Dunn from NXT TakeOver Chicago. Again, go watch that match if you haven't already. Um, The overall Competitor of the Year was Asuka. And then announced off-air was Tag Team of the Year Sanity, Future Star of NXT Cesar Bononi, and the Takeover of the Year, the also prestigious Takeover of the Year, went to NXT TakeOver War Games. Um, Sadly, I don't believe there's video of them giving the building a plaque. Um, The first year they did this, Takeover Brooklyn won, and then they shot a video of them giving the arena in Brooklyn a plaque. Yeah. Anyway, Nigel McGuinness was sick, so he was not here tonight, and so the commentary was only Mauro Ranallo and Percy Watson. And man, oh man, Matty, we were missing Nigel by the end of this show. Um, they had Paul Heyman narrate the pre-show video package, and we jumped right into our first title match, Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly versus the Authors of Pain for the NXT Tag Team Titles. This was a really good opener with Razor and O'Reilly especially working really well together. This was the AOP's first major regular 2-1-2 tag team match as baby faces. And considering neither have had to sell much in the past, it went really well. Akam sold his knee as injured to let Undisputed Air get the heat. Fish gave Razor a spear through the rope to the floor which, by the way, looked better than any Big E spear uh, that he does. Uh, Razor tagged in one point and uh, did the move where he gives Fish a fallaway slam while falling backwards on O'Reilly, who was on his back. Um, Crowd got into the match late after not making much noise early, which was actually the uh, story of quite a few of these matches tonight. Actually, all three title matches were or were similar in that regard. Um, and the finish saw the Authors of Pain hit the Super Collider. Um, Razor slammed down Bobby Fish, but before Akim could do the same to O'Reilly, O'Reilly gave him a Hurricanrana. Akim fell into Razor. Razor fell out of the ring, and O'Reilly pinned Akim with a schoolboy. So the Authors of Pain with their second official pinfall loss. Uh, War Machine was shown in the crowd, called War Machine, uh, Hanson and Ray Rowe. Uh, So I don't know if that will be their official name or not, but hey, at least for one night it was. Cassius Sono versus Velveteen Dream. Uh, On the pre-show, when they announced that uh, Velveteen Dream had won uh, Rivalry of the Year, he declared that he was going to win by knockout in 30 seconds. So this was one of those good news, bad news situations for Velveteen Dream. The good news is he did hit a knockout blow in the first 30 seconds of the match. The bad news is he celebrated and never made a cover, so he didn't actually win in that time. I should point out that as for celebrations, there are people who have won the main event of WrestleMania who didn't celebrate as big as Dream did when he hit his knockout blow. Um, the fans were actually so into Velveteen Dream that when Ono got up and uh, gave Dream an elbow strike of his own, the crowd booed, as Dream at this point was one of the more over people on the show. Um, not as good as the opener, but this match had much more heat. At one point, though, uh, I think they were on separate pages, and I think Ono thinks he still weighs um, around 200 pounds. As uh, Ono went running and dove at Dream, and Dream was supposed to catch him and hit a Death Valley driver, but they fell down. Uh, But the finish saw Velveteen Dream 
hit the rolling Death Valley driver. He had to do a second try because he couldn't get on up the first time. And then he hit the Purple Rainmaker, which is his top rope elbow, for the win. Uh, Dream actually dove from the ring post as opposed to the top rope. Maria Menounos was sitting at ringside, and they confirmed that she will be the ring announcer for the Women's Royal Rumble on Sunday night. Then we got the NXT Women's Championship, Ember Moon versus Shayna Baszler. I think this is one of those matches that a lot of people won't like. Personally, I thought it was a very good match. Um, It was very different. It was much more of an MMA fight than a pro wrestling match. And I can imagine that's why a lot of people won't like it. The crowd um, was hard getting into this match. Um, Shayna actually did the UFC entrance where they showed her walking from backstage, walking from her locker room all the way to the ring. Um, Baszler, early on, used the same stomp to the bent elbow that she did to Dakota Kai on TV a few weeks ago. And then she went um, and used a series of arm holds. Now, if you were watching, Ember Moon, by the way, Ember Moon did an amazing job of selling. Um, And... I don't know if it was just this crowd. I don't know if they would have been better, you know, at full sale maybe. But um, the crowd treated Shanna Baszler's arm holds as rest holds. And in all honesty, like, yeah, you could say they're rest holds. But, I mean, they were so much more than that. They were, she, they were working the arm. This was, like, this wasn't just the take a break, take a breather kind of arm hold. Like, this was actual offense. And Ember was selling it like death. And the crowd, for the most part, sat on their ass. Ember did hit the Eclipse, which was really stupid, since it injured her arm and elbow even more. So she couldn't make the cover. They teased uh, they teased stopping the match and had the medical staff run over and see if Ember could continue. Um... And she did. They let the match continue. Uh, Baszler got on the arm bar once, but Moon was near the ropes and was able to reach them. Uh, Baszler got on the arm bar a second time and worked this arm bar. It had to have been a good four minutes of working this arm bar. And the crowd kind of got into it. And this is where I was saying that with another crowd, you know, it could have been amazing because this crowd... Um, I don't think really appreciated the match that they were given. And maybe that makes it a bad match because they didn't have a match for the crowd. They had a match for what should have been great as opposed to what the crowd was into. And so anyway, Baszler is working this arm bar and working this arm bar and Moon is fighting it and she's scratching and clawing and just doing everything she can to get out of it. And and Baszler is just going on and trying to extend the arm, and she's trying to get uh, the her uh, legs wrapped around Moon, uh, and just trying to flatten her out. However, Moon is fighting for it and fighting for it and rolling through, and they're going all over the place. And Baszler is getting the bit on deeper. However. Uh, Ember using Shayna's own momentum against her managed to uh, stack her up in a cradle, uh, got the pin, got the win, and Ember Moon is still your NXT Women's Champion. Um, After the match, Baszler jumped Ember in the aisle and locked her in a rear naked choke. So yes, fans, this this feud will continue. Uh, Ricochet was shown in the crowd. Um, They called him Trevor Ricochet Man, so we'll see... You know, if he's even able to keep that name. Um, That seems to be the story of the show. By the way, Maria Menounos is allowed to keep her name, I imagine. Up next, Extreme Rules match. Adam Cole versus Aleister Black. This was a brutal, slightly bloody affair, which featured run-ins by the rest of Undisputed Era and all of Sanity. Um... There's a somewhat famous uh, scene from 1998 
where The Rock and Ken Shamrock were feuding. And Shamrock was on his knees and dared The Rock to hit him with a chair. And The Rock swung it like a baseball bat and hit Shamrock with a chair right in the face. Um, in a way, they kind of recreated this here, thankfully with a different result, as uh, early on, uh, Cole went for um, a, went, got a chair, went for that swing at Black's face, but Black is a smarter man than Ken Shamrock, so he ducked it. Um, in perhaps the most perfectly timed weapon shot of all time, Black went for his Cape Rata, and Cole hit him with a kendo stick shot to the abdomen while Black was mid-flip. Um, if he was a little bit lower, it got him right in the face. If he was a little bit higher, it got him right in the groin. But he got him perfect right in the abdomen. Um, at, somehow, at some point, I didn't quite catch where it happened. Cole busted his hand open, and the match was temporarily stopped so the medical crew... Medical crew could clean it up, but they did uh, go to replays of different moves uh, while that happened, so it wasn't so bad on TV. Um, Black picked up Cole in electric chair position and threw him into a ladder that they had propped up in the corner earlier. Now, if you watched Wrestle Kingdom 12, you might recall Kenny Omega uh, knocking Chris Jericho off the middle rope and Jericho falling backwards uh, out of the ring through a table set up at ringside. Well, they recreated that bump here as Black fell backwards through two tables set up at ringside. And I gotta say, it was a lot crisper than Jericho's. Um, Black uh, gave Cole an attitude adjustment on top of two chairs, which were back-to-back, which played off the angle from TV, where Cole did that to Black. And the crowd actually chanted, you deserve it, at Cole, which was funny. At this point was when the interference started. Um, Fish, O'Reilly ran down for interference. Eric Young and Alexander Wolf ran in to cut them off. Uh, Killian Dane ran in and used a suicide dive to the outside onto all four men. Um, and then Black put Cole through the announce table uh, with the double knees when he jumped off the case at ringside, which led to the finish. Uh, where Cole was in the ring and went after him with a chair and Black nailed him with a black mask to pick up the win in an excellent bout. And then trouble was a brewing. Former TNA slash Impact Wrestling world champion, the man who up until three days ago was the grand champion, the man who was still going to be on Impact for like the next two, three, four weeks. Ethan Carter to the third. EC3 was shown at ringside. Um, they called him EC3, so I don't know if they're actually going to call him Ethan Carter the third or just EC3. Um, you might recall that once upon a time, he was Derek Bateman on the never-ending, but yet amazingly awesome NXT Redemption. Um, and then we had the main event. Andrade Cien Almas versus Johnny Gargano for the NXT Championship. A match that started slow and built to one outstanding, outstanding main event match. Um, Almas came out in his La Sombra mask and had a masked mariachi band. They showed Candice LeRae at ringside with Gargano, the rest of Gargano's family uh, cheering on her husband. And uh, the match started slow, and in a way, it was kind of like a New Japan match. You could see that it was a good match, but it started slow, and you're like, man, this is, uh, this is it for the main event. It's kind of disappointing. But then it just picked up towards the end, and when it was over, you're like, holy crap, that was a great match. Um, these two wrestled each other on TV twice before, and so they played off of it a lot by reversing a lot of spots because they knew each other's and knew each other's spots and what they did and their moves. And um, so we had a lot of reversals. And actually, a series of reversals took the crowd from being, "Eh, okay, to on their feet giving a standing ovation halfway through the match. Um, At one point, uh, 
Gargano was draped across the middle turnbuckle. Uh, Almas gave him the double foot stomp, which let, which caused Gargano to fall outside the ring. Um, Gargano later on had the match won with the Gargano escape, but Zelina Vega ran over and grabbed Almas' hand before he could tap out. Um, and then uh, Gargano used a suicide dive to Almas, but Vega used her Karana to send him into the ring steps. Gargano kicked out of a hammerlock DDT. Uh, Vega got tired of this crap and went to interfere yet again. But finally, Candice LeRae jumped the guardrail and attacked her. LeRae beat the crap out of Zelina Vega, chased her out of the ring. Um, Gargano got on the Gargano escape. And Almas, almost twitching, uh, put, uh, got his foot on the ropes uh, to break it up. Um, the finish saw, uh, Gar- saw Gargano get his head smacked into the ring post when almost hit a running double knees while Gargano was propped up against the post. And back in the ring, almost hit the hammerlock DDT, actually draping off the top turnbuckle, which is what injured Drew McIntyre, which they pushed the entire match. Uh, and almost won with the aforementioned draping hammerlock DDT. Um, after the match, Zelina Vega returned to celebrate with her man, and they left. Uh, Candice LeRae returned, and uh, Gargano left, getting a standing ovation from the crowd. And, of course, Gargano was attacked from behind by a returning Tommaso Ciampa. Ciampa, returning from injury, struck Gargano with his crutch, um, and the show went off the air with LeRae tending to her fallen husband. Ultimately, and perhaps sadly, this will probably not be remembered as one of the best takeovers, but it is well worth checking out, especially uh, the last two matches. Um, And really, the women's title match I'd also check out, but hey, it's not for everyone. But uh, so that's going to do it. I want to thank everyone for listening. I will be back Sunday night with the live play-by-play of the Royal Rumble, the first ever Women's Royal Rumble. We are on the road to WrestleMania. And I want to thank you all for listening, and I'll talk to you again later. You're listening to the Angry Marks Podcast Network.